Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I'm down in the very back of my permaculture food forest garden in zone 8B. This is our duck house here. You can see the Negron fig here in desperate need of pruning. I have to prune this differently than my desert king fig here because the desert king produces one crop of, of figs per year and the Negron also called Violetta de Bordeaux, produces two crops a year, but they both definitely need some pruning. I'll be doing a video on that later in the fall. One of the things I've noticed since we've had a really difficult year with a late frost and a number of crops not producing well is that some of the more unusual crops in my garden, especially fruit crops, are doing incredibly well. This is Medlar, Mespalis germanica. This is a variety called Breeded Giant. set with tons and tons and tons of medlars. I highly recommend that you taste a medlar before you decide to put in a tree. The tree is really, really lovely, but the flavor of the medlar is very ancient and different than what you might be used to. And they obviously, you can see they look like a rose hip because they're in the rose family. Here we go. They have an unusual flavor, one that you may not be accustomed to, so definitely encourage you to try it. But boy, this is doing very well. It does not get watered at all. The tree is small and it sets huge crops every year. So in a year where my trees are struggling with some unusual diseases because again, cold, wet spring with a frost after our last frost date and then a dry, hot summer, I had a lot of my tree crops fail to set because the blossoms were frozen off. I lost virtually all of my early plums my Stanley plums did very, very well, but my other early plums did not. And I'm grateful for any of the tree crops that I do have. One little diminutive plum that has done quite well is my Shropshire Damson. You can see there is a little bit of shot hole disease on it this year. I don't water this tree, I don't treat it. But overall, this tree got a very big pruning several weeks ago. It's not the most beautiful looking tree. It is not the most sculptural tree. Part of the reason it's here in the backyard and I'm actually hoping to move it to another part of my garden, but it produces all of these little plums that are sour and kind of have a bitter quality to the skin and are not good for fresh eating, but they make the best jam and wonderful gin. I have a video about how I prep my plums for jam. So we're gonna be picking these today. Grateful for the things that are coming ripe here in September and grateful for the things like my medlar that will be ripening soon. If you are considering putting in a damson plum, they are slow to start yielding well. So you have to be patient. They produce small crops for the first many years. It's often said that you can expect your Shropshire damson to take between 10 and 15 years to come into full production. While we're down here, a little look at the garden from an angle you might not always see it at. This is the annual veggie garden here. This is this pepita pumpkin I still have yet to cut out. You can see here, tail end of the tomatoes. I'm hoping to get them to ripen. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and take this one through the fence here. Once they get a little blush of color, they will go ahead and ripen up indoors. And I need to get ahead of the squirrels especially and birds and get them indoors to ripen on the counter. But from this angle, you can see here's the annual veggie garden. Here is the summer kitchen that we have yet to finish. Here is the wood I have been splitting yesterday, wood shed. This is all of the scraps from us pan over here. Widening the door on our little blue shed back here made out of pallets. Still working on being able to recycle all those scraps. You can see the rain garden here. You can see all the work I have yet left to do. I have to finish pruning and tying up that rose. This is my hazel tree here that was squirrel planted. That's gonna need some big pruning this fall. Through the cage, there's my sea berries. This is the mulberry, which will need big pruning. I have here all kinds of conquered grapes that are not ready yet, and underneath them, the asparagus patch. Goomy berry, and all back here behind this is the orchard. All trees, 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 and trees. And turkeys. Hi, guys. 
right, Ruth. Hello. All right, Ruth, shall we pick for a little bit? So while Ruth is picking here, one of the things that I've noticed about my damsons is that they are much more resistant to plum curcurlia. They are, again, not really a plum that you want for fresh eating. They are an ancient variety, but there is no plum that makes better plum jam. They have that bitterness and sourness to them that adds complexity to the jam and any other dish you put them in. I'm having to carry this as we're picking because if I put it on the ground, the turkeys will go for it. They're very interested in what we're doing right now. Thank you, Ruth. So we're kind of picking as a team here. Hi, guys. Oh, you're careful not to fall on the beehive. I don't know if you can see it, but another reason that I think I don't struggle with as much insect pressure in my garden as perhaps non-permaculture gardeners is, let me get in here really quickly, untangle myself from a rose, is that my fruit trees are full of spiders. Absolutely chock full of spiders. And I think they do a really good job. If you can see that web in there. They do a really good job of getting pests before they get to my fruit. So lots left to do in the garden this time of year. Lots of harvest still to come. Going to be a good year for quince, a good year for medlars. Perhaps a good year to eat that duck. Not going to be a great year for pears, a mixed year for apples a great year for damsons. I hope to get a few batches of jam out of this young tree, which again, young, under 10 years old, still not in full production, and I keep it pruned very small. And yet still, I'm gonna get a good yield off of it. So thanks for watching today. Hi guys. So thank you for watching today. I will be back with more from my permaculture garden later in the week. Be sure to check out my Patreon down below in the description. Thanks, Ruth. And also, if you are interested in supporting the work of this channel, clicking like and subscribe is a great way to do that. Thanks.